Hey guys, Crux here with uh, Sin Shop. Uh, this is the start of Project Nomad. So Project Nomad is designed to take a PDP 11 slash 23, which is a 30 year old mini computer, uh, about the size of a mini fridge, uh, actually probably a little bit bigger than that, and combine it with the drivetrain of the electronic wheelchair and therefore we will have a robotic PDP-11 that we'll be able to drive around and uh, do cool stuff with. So in this video, we're going to be tearing apart the wheelchair and taking a look at the drivetrain there. And then later videos, we'll go into tearing down the PDP-11, see what that's made up of, uh, weld up uh, a frame that the PDP will sit on, uh, and then the drivetrain of this will go underneath that uh, and then there will be you know, control systems and everything else that's involved with making a robot. So first version isn't going to be autonomous, uh, we'll just have a remote control so we can drive around and follow it. Uh, if we get ambitious then we might add in the ability for it to follow us around or, or a few other things. So stay tuned. Alright, so we're uh Starting to take apart the wheelchair here. Unsuccessfully, apparently. It does come off. It's just this, just the one side, though. Yeah. There you go. You probably want to uh, disconnect the cable on the back there. have our base here. I believe it's the second drawer from the top. <coughs> I keep flathead screws. They are a horrible invention. Though I imagine the flathead screw coming before the Phillips, but they still suck. Yeah, that's pretty the fun. This is one of the first videos we're trying for Sin Shop. So if it sucks, well, there we go. I'm a network engineer, I don't get paid to do this.
Yeah, I'll just keep it. Uh, uh, no, this is probably good. Oh, that's a nice one. Where's the screws on the bottom? Well, let's get these in. Okay. And we'll flip them over and take both pieces out at the same time. No, take the batteries and I'm going to those. Curious how many amps this thing pulls when it's uh, going. I mean, that's a beefy size connector. It can carry a very large person, so. Yeah. Okay. Doesn't say in the connector that I can see. see how to uh, actually take it off. <clears throat> well, we can... I think we have to flip it over for you. Ah, here's the bolt. And that. Uh, I think that might be just... Ah, there we go. Six minutes. Okay. <clears throat> Did you find one? No, I didn't. I'm gonna go look inside. I found stuffy. Uh, yeah, close. I think I got it. You got it? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Kind of pulled the wheel out of the way. And it's not most efficient, but we're not planning on putting these back on. So I destroyed the screw. Which I didn't. It's <coughs> no big deal. How cheap you can find these online. So I picked this up for 150 bucks on Craigslist. It has some pretty hefty duty motors and batteries and motor controllers and everything you could need for a robotics platform.
Fusion Motors. So I think this can actually come off so we can mount stuff on top of it much easier. <coughs> uh, it looks welded. I mean, you could cut that. I think there's a key here now. Yeah. <coughs> So there's two drive motors. Your, uh, I guess that's motor controller, and then our battery charger is back here. And then it has a uh, yeah caster type wheels on the front and back, and looks like some rudimentary suspension there. That short gun. You gonna blow it out? Fine. Okay. Just pull those out. They go quite a ways. So. Yeah, I I think we want to keep the wheels in the center because that that'll let it just turn on a dime, and I think that'll work well. So I think the next thing I want to take a look at is see if we can get at the motor controller and then maybe the charge controller. And for that we need a regular Phillips. So these common wheels. Thinking when you design that.
shop shirt? Uh, I don't think I did. You need to. And you need to as well. Just guard. It's just a plastic guard, and a bunch of warnings to say "Do not open." Oh, okay, good. So we got that covered. So we are battery input and then that wire there. It looks like the middle one. So that's our is that the charge? No. That's that must be the charger. to the two motors. And we're back. So I need to get a larger memory card for this camera because four big four gig fills up quick. Uh, the motor controller was the last thing I was talking about was the InvaCare which is the manufacturer of this electric wheelchair and it is a uh, Oh, the camera can see it, but DK-PMA02 Mark V NX. And by the looks of the chassis, I think we do want to try to keep that. Probably cut this down. And then 
That looks like there's some good metal mount points to put the frame on. We haven't been able to figure out when these batteries were made. It has a date code of J3 and of course the helpful little circles that you're supposed to knock out when you actually sell the battery have not been knocked out. So there's no swelling on the battery and given this type of cell I'm, that's generally a good sign so um, I'm guessing a few years and hopefully we'll get another year out of it at least depending on how much we drive around the PDP-11 so yeah so there's the suspension mechanism yeah you can see there where this front wheel goes up and then mm. and then that pushes the middle wheel down and then the oh, back ones kind of clever, actually. and the back ones are just stationary yeah yeah I think we'll take these plastic bits off on the front assuming they're not structural which they shouldn't be although hard to tell no that's holding the wheel on so we can't take that off unless we re want to remake the wheel mount and let's take a look at our motors uh, they are a get in there Twenty four volt, three point six amp, one hundred and twenty RPM. Uh, part number one 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 seven zero five. And the rest of the tag is obscured by the bracket that's holding the motor in place, but I don't even know if it's doing that. It's just a uh, oh, look at this. So there's this bracket here, and it looks like the only purpose of that is if you have a really, really fat person on there, it prevents the motor from hitting the ground. <laughs> <laughs> it probably if you have the wheels off too. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Well, the Your way is way funnier, though. <laughs> I don't know how you get the wheels off, because uh, so the, the nut... The aftermarket price for these motors? Mm -hmm. 700 bucks each. <laughs> and we paid 150 bucks. For two of them. Yeah. And everything required to drive them. And those that's on sale. They're eleven hundred dollars normally. Oh, cool. And the motors and motors and gearbox. Yeah, and I don't think the uh, the tooling around that Grandpa did is really going to have significant significantly worn out the motors. Not so. unless he's used it for like you know ten years or something. Even and, then. Well, and he didn't. I mean, you can just even just by looking at the wear on the wheels, they are not that dirty. So. I'm guessing it was mostly used like inside. And there's some slight dirt from the ground, but overall it looks good. Uh, let's see. I want to take off the uh, motor controller. So here, hold the camera. What are we having? Five. Five minutes.
and there's nothing interesting on the back of it. Those were our two motors. So motor one and motor two. There's a battery input. There's our uh, charging input, and then there's a little uh, the control controller input. So not a whole lot there. Um, I don't know if we want to take it apart to look on the inside of it. All right, we want to get it working before we take yeah. it apart. <laughs> we should we should grab the control sticks off the and put everything together and make it work without all of its extra pieces on. Okay. I'm gonna put this back together while I remember the order of the plugs. It looks like okay so there's there's two power lines and then there's that looks like two feedback uh, lines. So I don't know if there's a, I guess it's probably for speed control. Of course it's somewhere in Vegas here and there's no air conditioning in the garage so that's how the ball's out here. Under you is we get it running and then you sit on top of the thing and try to drive it around. Because I mean, you can drive it around with the seat and all. Why oh, take the easy way out? Okay, so this is a Mark V SPJ model number 111. So a lot to it. Okay. Oh, here. It slips over the top and then it buckles into itself. Looks 
looks like it flipped. Or did it? Was it like that? Or did I flip it over? The buckle's on the outside, so. Yeah. And then, yeah, yeah. You're, you're right. It was in there very strangely. That doesn't make any sense at all. Seemed like it would have to go the other way. I didn't take these apart, so. Why on earth would they design it that way? But yeah, it does. Yes, it's backwards, but this is this is how it was for sure. That's stupid. Ah, uh, because it's designed as a handle. Ah, oh, okay. Slightly less stupid, I suppose. Since you're now the subject matter expert in that, you can do that one too. think this is boring video recording this but from what I've seen of other uh, hacker spaces who record stuff like this people watch it so plus we'll edit it way down later anyways well yeah. now I'm gonna take this segment in there I'm gonna put it in there put like in multiple the times thing. it's gonna loop for like an hour and there'll, like, be, there'll be like some comment, why couldn't you figure that out? <laughs> Watch the entire hour. All right, oh, go ahead and put those in there. So that one goes up front. In the front, the mm -hmm. one that says front battery here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like that. And that one goes there. Uh, it plugs in there, so I think it goes, oh yeah, there's a little arrow that says front, other way. It should be drivable. You have to you turn it on? Yep. Okay. It is. It, need, it needs weight on it though to work properly. Oh yeah, because uh, that's the way the suspension works, there's hardly any uh, weight on the wheels. If that said, it could be easily tuned to that not be the well, case. We're going to be putting a PDP 11 on the top of the bloody thing, so I don't think weight is going to be an issue. We seem to have been able to take it apart and put it back together without breaking it, so. Yeah, well, it all seem rather modular, so. But yeah, it can nicely turn on a dime here. 
Not quite zero, not quite zero turning radius though. It doesn't run, look at it, check this out, it doesn't run one wheel backwards all the time. I guess unless, unless you get it One direction. Perfectly. So, how's the... Oh, it's because that one's slipping. Oh, that's why. So, if, yeah. there, if there's weight on it, Let's then it would... Uh... Try that. Woo! <laughs> It went much better. <laughs> How did it ever? <laughs> it might be better if you were actually standing on it and controlling it, but I was not expecting which <laughs> movement it was going. Oh, it works. What's next? Uh, I don't know. I'm going to stop this video clip okay, though since so we're almost at the end of it. Front point here is obvious. That's just screaming for things to be mounted into it. Uh, turn it around. And I also made it slow, by the way. Oh, okay. I was wondering why. No, I, I turned it down to slow. Okay. The back, not so obvious. Um, I don't think you could mount there, but I'm sure we could we could weld something to this, like maybe uh, like maybe weld a, a piece of angle bar here or something. Uh, that's where we gotta talk to Bill and get his expertise. But if it were me, um, yeah, I would take a piece of square tubing and run it across here. So you ground those down really nice. Um, you'll have to put in a uh, gusset to add in some additional structure, structural uh, thing, because you want this tube to be square. Um, see, that's the back. Uh, we're gonna have to come out to here. Do we have the tape measure? I'm curious what its dimensions are. Also, we can make the control cord longer. Oh, yes. It's already longer. It's just zip stripped to the uh, thing. Looks to be 24 inches wide. And about 30 inches long. So it's slightly wider than the PDP, because the PDP was like 21 and a half or so. Standard rack, so. Yeah. And then it was 30 deep, so it's about perfect deep. So we really just have to make something structural there. Um, the thing I'm concerned about is if you build something here, you're going to limit your suspension travel. I don't know how far well it can go. What's a nine? It can't go very far. We go about there. It's it's already limited, right? Yeah. And it looks like. Um, you want to get a something like a three or something? Okay. Right. So yeah, we can go all the way up there. It's not designed to go above that mount point, anyways. So we'll make our frame basically go up to just above this level then. I was hoping to have it slightly lower. Um, but I mean, it's, you're talking an inch, so that's, I'm not gonna squabble over an inch if it's gonna make it that much easier. Um, the 
frame will have to be probably, well, I don't know how, how thick it would have to be, but you want, since it's hanging over quite a bit, it's going to have to be pretty strong throughout here. Most of its weight, most of the weight though is still going to be on the main chassis, so yeah, not so worried about that. Well, yeah, we'll hold it in place and it should be good. The other part of Project Nomad is the PDP-11 itself. So here's the computer, and that will be mounted on top of the mobile robotics platform. Okay, now that we have video again, because the memory card ran out of space, uh, here's the PDP-11. And... So, looking in here, yeah, the bottom there, but it's about two inches from the actual bottom. However, there are kind of mount points at the corners where the uh, caster wheels are. So we're thinking taking the wheels off, and then that gives us a, a nice mount point for the frame we're going to build to go onto our robotics platform. Quick tour of the PDP-11. We have the RLO2 drive, which basically takes platters like this. So that holds 10 megabytes, which will hold a MP3. Not that it has enough horsepower to play it. You have the main computer part, and then there's our drive cage, and then the rest of the cage case is pretty much just empty so the weight of it other than the chassis itself is this because this has a big honking motor in it and that that spins up the drive platter so hopefully we can keep it all intact and uh, you know maybe clean that up a little bit but uh, that should work. So that's all we have for today. I'm Crux with Shin Shop, and uh, stay tuned for the next installment.